I thought instead of trying to give you my potted summary of Trumpism, I'd just tell a story from the Florida Republican primary earlier this year. So I was standing outside a polling station. I talked to a voter, an elderly Cuban sort of emigre, as he came out and asked him if he'd mind telling me how he voted. And he said that he preferred Donald Trump, but that he had voted for Ted Cruz. He said, well, this country needs a dictator which is why I wanted Trump to win, but I didn't want to blame myself if the country did get a dictator, so I voted for Ted Cruz. <laughs> and then, then the next voter I talked to was a lady who worked for the federal government, and she explained that she'd voted for Marco Rubio, um, senator for Florida, and a kind of noted small government uh, conservative, and she'd voted for him because she was fed up with cuts to the federal government's budget. What I think you take from that story, what I took from it at least, is that what happens in an election is really, really complicated. <laughs> Understanding what goes on inside the head of a single voter is complicated. There's a ton of political science out there that shows that people don't actually follow the model that we like to sort of think of as being how democracy works, which is that everybody informs themselves about the policy positions of the various candidates and makes a call on who has the best ideas for running the country. What tends to happen instead is that people make their minds up about whether they like the candidates or not, and then in their own minds kind of transmute their policies to fit their own um, ideas. I think the first bit we have to do is try and understand why he won. Beware of anybody who comes to you and says, Trump won because of racism, because of misogyny, because of... There are so many factors that go into this, and ultimately what you're trying to explain is why a couple of hundred thousand voters in the Midwest switched their votes, or rather showed up to vote, and why Hillary Clinton voters stayed at home. So beware people bearing simplifications. I think the interesting thing about the result, though, is that many of the analysis is about why it wouldn't happen. Weirdly, it turns out, have been validated. It just turns out that uh, there was a big factor which was publicly known, but not enough people were thinking intelligently about, and I include my self in this, which was the Electoral College. There was this argument that uh, America's diversity would inoculate it against a Brexit-style shock, and it did in the popular vote. It, 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 you know, Trumpism was rejected. But of course, we should have remembered that the Electoral College was designed to prevent the cities out voting the countryside. That was, that was its original purpose. And of course, it may now, and I think possibly will, result in the end of uh, American democracy as we know it. That is definitely the sort of in terms of the possible outcomes of, of Trump being elected. That I would say is the worst case scenario, but it is very much a plausible scenario. You know, if someone had said to you about George W. Bush or Ronald Reagan, this is the end of American democracy, then I think you should have seen that person as being slightly hysterical. However, that is a, albeit I think slightly unlikely, but realistic outcome of the, the victory of Trump. So I'm going to start at the kind of upper end, the most positive uh, outcome of, of Donald Trump's election. It seems fairly clear now from Ivanka attending uh, his meeting with uh, Shinzo Abe, from uh, the way that he is clearly using uh, the mechanics of the Trump organization to woo foreign diplomats, and we are going to see a kind of approach to enriching the first family that we're more used to seeing in post-Soviet or newly post-colonial states. This is the best case scenario. This is the best case scenario. <laughs> It's less than a year ago that our government in the UK published a national security strategy looking forward for five years. And in April, I had the privilege of uh, sitting with a couple of the authors of that uh, document discussing a national security strategy. And I said, well, of course, we've got to think of uh, outlandish things that might happen. For example, Brexit and Donald Trump being elected. And it, the, the laughter wasn't even nervous because people thought this was such a ridiculous proposition uh, only six months ago. And it just shows you how events come and hit you in your face in quite remarkable ways. It all remains to be seen uh, where Trump will go. My instinct is that on climate change, he will mark a radical break uh, with the Obama administration. I think that's very clear. He has a strong support of the Republican Party for that. I think he'll mark something of a break on trade, but I think that was already happening, and Clinton had rejected major trade deals already because of the popular pressure for something to be done in that. But on security, I think there could be more continuity than people believe. Uh, on Russia, I think there will be an attempt at a reset with Russia. Trump, I think, will push that despite the views of most of the Republican Party in Congress. But I think there are real limits to how far he'll go. And I would not be at all surprised if six, nine months 
down the road from here, Trump attempts to get a deal with Putin and fails, believes that Putin is lying to him, which would not be the first time, and we go back to a more standard Republican Mitt Romney approach to this. A lot will depend on who he appoints as Secretary of State in the next few days, but if it is somebody like Mitt Rodney or David Petraeus, I think uh, it will not be such a big change from the past. There's an upbeat aspect to the story, and that is that after this, there is no possibility of ever taking the polling industry seriously ever again. I'm looking forward to a collective um, exercise in Harakiri on behalf of the um, industry, um, and I've been waiting for that since the Brexit vote. It has yet to happen, but um, I remain confident. I think that the um, reaction to the election says an awful lot about us and our fears and rather less about the objective reality of um, Trump and his commitments and his policies. I think it's a mixed bag myself and on the whole I think that the upside outweighs the downside, at least so far as it can be discerned. The downside is that um, he's got a sceptical approach to climate change and um, I can see that that is a genuine problem. Another problem is that he's likely to be uncritically supportive of Israel. As I say, it's a mixed bag. There is um, good sides and bad sides. And frankly, I think it would be better to judge people on what they do in practice rather than attempting to demonise them by dint of association with Trump before they've had the chance to prove themselves.